How can this be? Hold back! my friend. Why must you do this, father? Nidhogg is fallen. There is no need for further deception. Now is the time to renounce the lies which led us down this path. To start anew! And tear down the very pillars of our society? Our history, our values, everything we have built over a thousand years? <sighs> a fool to the last. Go, as Isla awaits. Lord Orchafon! Unharmed? Forgive me. I could not bear the thought of... of... Oh, do not look at me so. A smile better suits a hero.
Don't. Please. A knight lives to serve, to protect, to sacrifice. There is no greater calling. Leave me to mourn and give chase for my son and for the nation he loved. Go! His sacrifice shall not be forgotten. Bye. My friends, I am in your debt. Think nothing of it. Your wounds are healing well, I trust. Some wounds do not heal. The Founding. The Scriptures, a thousand years of lies, all to deceive the common man. Nay, our own brothers and sisters. For the blood of the Knights Twelve flows within all our veins. You knew this to be true. You knew, and you concealed it. I should be interested to hear how you came by this knowledge. But yes, you have the right of it. The architects of Ishgard, King Thorden and his knights twelve, entrapped and butchered the great worm, Ratatosker, that they might partake of her eyes and thereby transcend their mortal limits. Upon learning of their treachery, Nidhogg was consumed with a murderous and justified rage. I dare say you know what followed. The Great Worm slew the King and half of his knights. Aye, but Nidhogg was subdued, and his eyes plucked from their sockets by the knights that remained. Their one mistake was to show mercy, for from his brother Hreisvelger did Nidhogg receive a new eye, thus rejuvenating his form and empowering him to embark upon an eternal quest for vengeance. Whilst Thorden's son Haldreth took one of Nidhogg's eyes and learned to wield its power in defense of his people. 
Thus was the first Azure Dragoon born, and ever since that time, his honored successors have risen to drive Nidhogg from our lands whenever the worm has returned to plague us. I ask you, my son, will you answer for my sins? Will your son and his son answer for me as well? What do you mean? If a man cannot atone for his sins in the course of his all too fleeting life, must his progeny then be held to account? Must every subsequent generation be judged as well? Thorin's betrayal of Ratatoska was an unconscionable, unforgivable sin. Should we then, as his descendants, meekly surrender ourselves to an eternity of punishment? Nay, say I. I would not see our children sacrificed in a vain attempt to appease an implacable foe. Dragons are not like us, my son. To they who live forever, the wrongs of antiquity are as those of yesterday. No reparations shall ever suffice. This fact alone should serve as ample justification for our actions. Yet some refuse to see it as such. For men like you, who yearn to commit themselves to a nobler cause, a more compelling narrative is required. This is your solution. This is how you protect our people. You have given us a lost cause, a death sentence, with your compelling narrative. You but doom our countrymen to give their lives for a lie. And they do so gladly. Highborn and lowborn alike are proud to serve, to fight and die for their country. And what would you say to them? What would you tell the wives who have lost their husbands? The mothers who have lost their sons? That their loved ones died for naught? I... Uh... Over the course of a thousand years, countless men have donned these robes and every one of them came to accept the necessity of this solution. Once, I hoped you might come to accept it as well. Do not despair, my son. Soon I shall free us from the sins of antiquity and bring about the change you so fervently desire. If he has spoken with others, I would have their names. Escort him to a cell and question him. Thoroughly. Your Eminence. You saw something, did you not? A vision of the past? So this is the power of the Echo. Would that it had shown you a finer moment from my past. T'was an exercise in futility, as you saw. 
faced with the firmity of his conviction and his many ready rejoinders, my words deserted me. To be frank, I am embarrassed to recall it. A friend once impressed upon me the importance of differentiating between words, deeds, and beliefs. Were he here, I suspect he would judge your father's conviction to be no more than rank, self-serving delusion. Even so, I cannot help but wonder what manner of change he intends to bring about. I have given some thought to that as well. During the battle within the vault, the Heaven's Ward demonstrated strange and unnatural abilities. Aye, the manner in which Sir Zephyrin struck down Lord Horshafon was unlike anything I've ever seen before. The spectacle called to mind King Thordon and his Knights Twelve as they are depicted in scripture, holy powers and all. Mere fabrications which have become objects of faith, instilled with the belief of countless devoted souls. Seven hells! If Lady Iceheart can use her own body as a vessel for summoning, I see no reason why others could not. Are the Heaven's Ward truly so reckless? Unbelievable! As they fled, my father spoke of Aziz La. Though I know not what he intends, I fear no good shall come of it. His ambitions are too great, and his minions too powerful. We must find the Heaven's Ward, and stop my father before it is too late. <laughs> 